right, welcome back everybody. I had a perfect excuse to pick one of these up when we were working on the, or still are working on the prototype for the true scale, one six scale um, carbon freezing chamber environment for, for uh, jazzing dioramas. So I thought while I'm showing you the pictures, uh, I'm going to do this unboxing and review of the figure. That's a big box. Alright. They should consider double boxings as standard. Uh, right here, the dent through and through. And the box has a bit of shelfware and damaged corners. Now, I don't care about that sort of thing, but I know there are plenty of people out there who do, so I thought I should mention that. Uh, like This looks like the type of packaging you get from a sideshow statue. So, a big box and this white foam That'll be an excellent protection. So, great. So, what's in the box? This looks like the battery module for the screen. And these are solid black metal poles that I think go, yeah, this is going to go in the stand so you can make it float. And this will probably be used to make it stand. I will probably be using neither because I will be placing them inside the diorama, the carbon freezing chamber diorama. But let's look at this. What's this? Maybe this is a read the an RTFM moment. So this is the manual. Yeah. So you need three AA batteries. I like this, oh, AAA batteries, and I like this, I'll tell you why, because that's pretty close, probably close enough to make no difference to the five volts coming from a USB port, which makes this pretty easily USB powered. So this slides out for whatever reason. Yeah, and then you have the, I don't know, this doesn't, this doesn't look like a part of the carbon freezing floor to me. It needs all the holes you saw in the pictures I put up of the carbon freezing chamber, the way I designed it anyway. Another battery compartment probably for this lighting. This pattern is correct. This is what's in the stairs, so if you would move this back it would be pretty accurate. Plastic, hollow, just your pretty, pretty much your standard base from uh, Hot Toys or Sideshow. This, I don't know, it's still probably plastic. Oh, and you could, ah, I get it. You can turn it around, and then if you have the floating setup. This mimics the floor where they moved him to uh, Boba Fett's ship. So, here's the figure. Um, what do I think? Um, let me take you up close. Um, it's very clearly plastic. It looks more metally in the on the screen here of my camera than it does in real life. 
So I'm going to be treating that as you probably would have expected from me. I think a little bit of the Vallejo uh, weathering powder, if you take a bit of the silver and the gunmetal and just put it on there with your finger, it's about, it's going to be a, a, a few minutes of work and you'll get a more realistic surface finish, so that's a pretty easy thing to do. I don't have a reference for the face. I'm going to put that up here. Let me pan to the left so I can put it side by side, but it, even without the superimposed image you are going to be able to see by now, I think the face is a little bit off, especially around the mouth. But, um, yeah, it'll, uh, it'll do. I don't think we have a lot of options when it comes to the 1-6 scale stuff, but, uh, all right, let's like, take a look at the rest before I render judgment. This is some nice detailing. Let me get close. Yeah. Definitely nice detailing there. The module looks excellent as well. It's showing some pretty simple construction. There's three LEDs that are epoxied in place behind the screens. So the green screen and the LED readouts. Let's put in the batteries, they'll come back. All right, that's pretty unique. When they say batteries included, I was assuming I would have to mount them uh, in case of leaking uh, power uh, from the batteries and, and acids, but apparently they expected them to move fast because the batteries are already mounted, so let's turn it on. That looks pretty good, guys. I mean, it's very basic LED light stuff, but uh, it'll do the job perfectly for what we need. I'm not sure if it's going to show up on the video or not, but uh, the screen does have a nice oscilloscope type grid. All right, so um, I've reversed the floor again so I can do the upright um, position first. This is, it looks like uh, some type of Velcro. So let's place that here. Then keep this turned on. Let's see how that mounts. This goes up. That's pretty cool. Um, these all seem pretty similar, but not totally. So, does it matter how you place them? Probably not. This seems magnetic. Nine. I have a number here. Four. But it doesn't say any uh, anything on the on the manual. I can't see which number goes where. So I'm assuming that's up to me. There is only one one way to fit them because of these little tabs. Like that. Yeah, that looks pretty awesome. I must say. That looks pretty good from a distance, especially from this angle, by the way, the sculpt looks pretty good too. A bit soft, but this is, uh, so this is the, um, the setup you'll have if you want the carbon freezing chamber look where it's upright. The floor is supposed to be carbon freezing chamber even though I'm pretty sure that's not accurate having researched it as extensively as I have for the project we're doing. But um, yeah, this is cool. I, uh, it's, uh, it's very good for what I have in mind. So. Let's reverse the floor, and then this one, and the maker float. Now, these are interchangeable control panels for the slab control. Apparently, I need to go in here. And looking at the manual, I'm assuming they want me to exchange these panels. 
pushing that out. I wouldn't pull on these, so I'm pushing it with my finger through the other end, like that, and just place that here. Is there any way, because looking at it like this, it's nice, you know, it's floating. Um, but this looks, this looks rather crude. And I'm assuming then that it is the movie accurate way to move the panel or something. Because why would you? Uh, probably because otherwise you wouldn't see it. But then again, why wouldn't you leave it on the left side if you have it standing up? That's probably because it's more movie accurate that way. I don't see any possibility, any option to um, yeah to place panels here. Would be should be possible. Maybe I'm thinking like a product engineer now, but to have these things taken out, or even this one, that's easier. Lift them out and at least have a partial cover here. Well, again, that's a detail I would have gone for probably if I designed this. Um, but they probably think you're not going to be looking at, uh, at it from that angle if you use this setup, which makes sense. Probably have a battery pre-mounted here then. Let's see if that's true. The switch is on the back. Or is it? Ah, oh, here. Here's a switch. Yeah, look at that. It shows up on camera even. Here's some light. Some pretty faint light. Looks, again, that looks better on camera. The, right, the light doesn't reach all the way to the ends. Um, yeah, another, that's just another minor gripe. And I would have liked to see a little bit more weathering here. Oh, it's not Velcro. It, there's no Velcro on the back here, so it's just to protect the paint, I guess. But it is magnetic, so it doesn't want to fall forward. That's good. Um, so, what do I think? Um, it's a pretty, yeah, it's pretty good. Um, I would give it like a 75 out of 100. There are some inelegant, uh, inelegant solutions uh, with the, the way to make it float. And um, it is, a bit pricey, $250, dollars so let's say, for all plastic. No articulation. There is some lighting. I'd say this was worth $200, but, well, maybe with the prices that have gone up over the past few years, $250 is about what, that's yeah, probably what Hot Toys would have asked for it anyway. Um, yeah, so I would I would like to see a little bit more uh, metal. I liked a little bit more weathering. Um, I'm going to be looking up the sculpt right now because I want to be able to to say something about that. Hmm. Close, very close, but still different around the mouth. Here's another angle. Uh, there, there's detail lacking around the eyes. And the mouth is slightly off. These two sculpts compared. I have the I have the idea that it's closer when you look at the sides, but um, it's not it's not perfect. But you know, uh, nobody's gonna go, hey, what's Luke doing in there? So, so that's good enough. It's pretty good enough for me. All right, just to satisfy my Curiosity, I got some of the Tamiya Weathering Master, the titanium gunmetal or silver. Let's see if it shows. Let's see if it shows on camera.
Well, the effect is subtle, so I doubt if it's going to show up on camera, but... It does give it a more metallic effect, and the raised edges and the forms are jumping out a bit more. So, it's uh, three minutes well spent, if you have the stuff. If you don't, probably not worth buying it over that, but... Uh, I wonder if it shows up on your screen over there, but over here I get, oh yeah, there you go, clearly a more metallic look. Some pretty cool stuff this, very easy to apply, look at how those raised edges now pop. Yeah, so if you have it lying around, the uh, Tamiya weathering powder might definitely be worth five minutes of your time. Like I said, easily to easily applied and easily reversed, and it does help sell the look a bit. Not as much as I was expecting, though. So, gotta be honest with you there. Might do some dry brushing with silver paint later on. So, um, what do we think? I think it's, uh, yeah, it's pretty, I think it's a good, good effort. Um, some, did some points deduction, uh, for the, um, I think the sculpt is a bit off, even though in this light, if I look at my camera screen, it looks better than up close in real life. Um, I like the electronics, and the fact that it's not watch batteries, that's good. Uh, for me, this would be a very easy conversion to USB power to have it powered on all the time. Um, it's plastic, but as a, as a plastic goes, it's pretty decent stuff. Um, pretty decent in weight. Um, another few points deduction for the crudeness of the... Uh, uh, of the floating device with this, uh, the sticks that uh, require you to take out two screens. So the deduction for this crude device, I still, I have to wonder, I mean, I can see why you wouldn't want holes in here uh, that you would have to cover up if you want to pose it vertically like I do, but it would have been so easy to make these panels, panels detachable and just have the the stick, the, the Y-shaped stick go through here, make it a little smaller or maybe make it wider to go, no, I don't know. And uh, that way you wouldn't have to completely remove these panels and leave them open. I'm, I'm, I'm genuinely wondering if I missed something here, but that's just, it's just not, it's, it still borders on a minor gripe, so um, that, together with a price for a piece of plastic with three LEDs of $250, I would have felt better at $200. There's, I mean, there's no articulation here, there's, but probably, I'm going to guess, it being Star Wars, there's a pretty hefty um, fee you have to pay for the license. Yeah, some minor uh, gripes for the base where I think the illumination is not as strong as it could be. It's just not very bright given the fact that we're getting close to sundown. Um, I would have liked to see a little bit more here and maybe they were trying to go for that faded uh, look to the outsides, the edges. That, but that's not in the movie as far as I can recall. Those are very bright orange. So, um, yeah, again, minor gripes. All in all, pretty solid performance. Um, in my experience, Sideshow is, is pretty good with these ina inanimate objects. Um, more so than, than figures. So, um, yeah. I'm happy I got it, and it's going to be a centerpiece uh, together with my carbon freezing chamber diorama. So, uh, I'm happy. 
So thanks for watching and see you next time.